Hello. Uh, this is sort of a guide on how to complete a Petra's run. Um, I do not use the strats that you are very much accustomed to when doing a normal last wish. So I hope to teach you guys something new and something that you guys can learn something from. Um, I do a lot of Petra's runs and like a diamond guides, a lot of raid Sherpas and helps. Uh, on PC, so if you guys have any questions feel free to always come over to the twitch channel I don't want to like shameless plug. It's just a way for you guys to learn something new I hope this video can be of service though for a lot of you Anyway, let's just jump right into it the loadouts you're gonna want for a last wish raid uh, probably two warlocks at least one hammer striking Titan probably a hunter just for the celestial nighthawk golden guns or the tethers for parts uh, and then the final one is up to you. It could be a warlock, could be a titan, could be a hunter. So two warlocks, one titan, one hunter. Oh, I guess it makes two slots open, but still, just you just probably need a good mixture of those. That's that's what I found to be the best. Anyway, the for the first encounter, you want your warlocks to be using Well of Radiance with Luna Factions if you're using the shotgun. If you're not, make sure you take them off for the Whisper strategy. It is a bad idea to have that on with Whisper. It does not do the correct damage, and your White Nail gets messed up. So the first thing at Kali that you're going to want, for me, is an Anarchy and two shotguns. Now, if you do not have an Anarchy, Legend of Acrius and or, well, I guess not and, but or Lord of Wolves is going to be a great option for Kali. You're going to stand at the plate that is very, very close to the entrance of the room, have one person stand on it to bring Kali over there. What that does is makes Kali forced to, to teleport there. You can thank Wrath and Redeem for those strats. Uh, it'll force Kali to teleport over to that area. Once the first set of blights explode, you will see the two explode on the two-thirds of the plate, not the one-third. I feel like if you're doing a Petra's run anyway, you should know this stuff, but maybe this is helpful for people who don't fully understand everything about it. Anyway, after she teleports to the plate, after those blights explode, drop a well. When she teleports, if you have an anarchy, shoot two on the ground, one at her, and then maybe a couple more just for safekeeping. Swap to your shotgun and shoot, shoot, shoot. Anarchy glitches out the game a little bit, so it's not always super consistent, but my rule of thumb is that Kali is the first boss, so if you mess up, just keep trying to use the anarchy. And if you don't have it, like I said, shotguns like Lord of Wolves, Legend of Acrius are really good here. Um, with the Anarchy though, she will hopefully get pulled down to the ground and she will not move from that spot. If she does, just go to the next plate and just get ready for more. Um, and just keep using it, man. Just keep firing away, keep hitting her, keep hitting the ground. Make sure you're meleeing and shoddying if you have a trench barrel shoddy. If you don't, just use a really good shoddy that you have that's kind of a faster fire rate to keep her stunned. Basically the whole goal of this, not cheese, but strategy, partially cheese, is to keep her stunned as long as possible. So that's what you're gonna wanna do. So when you stun her, hopefully you do it correctly. And if you do, her health bar with Anarchy, this is the only way that this works, her health bar will go down to nothing, but she will still be alive. So just wait for her to teleport and then she'll die inevitably. It's a very cool strategy for speed runs and it's a very cool strategy for this. And I find it to be the best way to kill Kali. Like I said, if you don't have Anarchy, make sure you're using Legend of Acrius or Lord of Wolves. And if you don't have those, just shotgun, 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 shotguns are good here. Whisper is a viable strategy, but since the nerf happened, which made it have nine shots, that is not going to be good. After you have completed the Kali encounter, congratulations, you were on to Shirochi. I recommend taking the bridge as slowly as possible. You can still get the chest, you can still do all that. Make sure if you're a hunter or titan that you're throwing on either Lion Rampants or Stompies if you want to secure your jumps. If you feel comfortable, just feel comfortable. Um, another thing that we typically do with these runs is if you're really uncomfortable, you can actually, if you're on PC, you can assign a macro to Alt F4. If you're on console, you cannot do this, so just make sure you're comfortable and ready to do some jumps. Okay, so when you get across there, you're gonna wanna assign some people some plates for the room on Shirochi. When you get to Shirochi fight, I recommend the Warlocks stay with the Luna faction well. 
and the Titan. We just need one Titan with a Hammer Strike, a Hunter with a Celestial Nighthawk for the damage on Kali, and then the other two doing whatever. But anyway, what you're going to need is a Thunderlord if you have it. If not, use a Hammerhead. I use a Nation of Beasts curated, but I know not everybody has that, so I would recommend a secondary that's going to do some good ad clearing. And then finally, you're going to want a shotgun. I use a curated threat level from the um, Scourge of the Past raid, but you can also use an Icolos SG or you can use a different shoddy. Just make sure you have a shotgun, make sure you have something to clear some ads, and make sure you have a Thunderlord or a Hammerhead. Those are really good here. After you do two rounds of DPS on Kali and you go into the plate room, I always recommend that you take out all of the adds in the room first. This is really, really helpful because it clears out the room, makes everybody have a good mindset, and then make sure, like I said, this is a Petra's run guide, not a regular guide, but I'll go over this again. Make sure you're reading the plates from left, from top left to bottom right. The room does shift accordingly with the plates. Make sure you're getting the one, two, three, four ready, and then just say jump. Everybody jump on, make sure you're swapping plates accordingly. Kali, or Shirochi's a little bit tricky, but um, you'll get it over time. Anyway, once that is done, congratulations, you have advanced on to the next part. Okay, so this is the part where actually, surprisingly, a lot of Petra's runs end. Uh, this is the bridge with Morgeth. So, funny enough, there is actually a way to skip over doing the bridge if you only need one person to make it through. Um, I recommend you try to get two or three through just for the ammo capacity alone, but yeah, you can actually, after you beat Shirochi and you make it through the room and you're on to the bridge area, you can have people from your fire team leave, uh, go to orbit, and at that point I recommend that they go and touch a flag on a planet. Um, but yeah, you can have people leave for the bridge, so that part is you only need one person to make it across. Hopefully, that person is confident and ready to do it. I still think it's not too bad, just be patient on the bridge, there's no need to rush the bridge. You have as much time as you want. Next up is Morgeth. Morgeth is an incredibly easy fight, but easy to mess up as well. Morgeth is a fight where if you are in the wrong position at the wrong time, you might get caught off guard and killed. It's just the random things that happen. So here's what you're going to want for loadout. You're going to want the Whisper of the Worm. If you don't have it, I recommend getting it before you even go into this raid. You should always have that. That is just a good weapon to have. You can get it every single day. I recommend going to get that. You're going to need the Whisper of the Worm. You're going to need an I use an Ikelo Shadi just because the Eye of Ribbons, the captains, have a solar shield, so it makes it easy to take out the solar shield. And then I use a hand cannon or whatever in my primary slot, right? Like I have Midnight Coup, I use Midnight Coup there a lot. So anyway, after you have assigned who does what, so you're gonna want a warlock who has a well without Luna Faction boots, you're gonna want a whatever else you really only need a well everybody else can be using their supers you just need one well of radiance for the ending so here's how we do this system and it's proved to be the best so far we put two guardians on the left side we put two guardians on the right side or three guardians on the right side i'm sorry and then we put one guardian in the middle who's going to grab the first and last orb the two guardians on the left side the first one is going to grab both of the orbs when they spawn on the left side. The second guardian on that side will be the first cleanser, which means they need to kill the Eye of Riven, grab the Eye of Riven, hit the grenade button on the person that gets trapped by the boss, and boom, they take their buff away from that person. Then another two orbs will spawn on the left side and on the right side, so the person on the left side will grab both orbs, and on the right side, each person will grab one orb each time. Now the person on the right side, the third person, is the second cleanser, and they will cleanse whoever needs to be cleansed. After that person has been cleansed, the final orb will spawn, and after that final orb spawns, you will grab it, you will run to the back of the room, the warlock will drop a well without Luna Factions, so that is very important, you will proc you are either Whispered Breathing, or you will use your White Nail when the boss shows the availability to do damage, it'll glow on his back. You'll shoot the boss's back a bunch of times, boom boom boom, the fight is over. Make sure to kill the orbs that are floating in the air before you leave the well, that's very important. We've actually had a death there before, <laughs> kind of funny. Um, 
After you have beaten Morgeth, congratulations, you are on to the vault. Getting to the vault is very straightforward. Just run up the stairs, run over there, go to the lift, yada, yada, yada. When you're in the vault, it is very, very important that you stay as smart and safe as possible. This is where a lot of runs end due to people just being impatient or due to people just not listening to directions or not listening to callouts or getting too caught up in the moment that this is just a regular raid. So don't stay on the don't stay on your toes the whole time, but definitely don't stand back on your heels. Just stay grounded. So here's what you're going to want. You're going to want a Warlock. Warlocks, you're probably going to want to stick with a well here again. Even though it's not necessarily the best to clear adds, it is best for staying healed. Titans, I still recommend Hammer Strike with a Hall of Fire Hard Exotic. It'll be really helpful here um, just to get your Hammer Strike back consistently. Um, and Hunters, you guys can use Celestial Nighthawk Golden Gun and regular Golden Gun if you don't have it. Do not use anything that can harm yourself. For heavy weapons, I recommend Thunderlord. Legend of Acarius, or a Lord of Wolves if you have that as your secondary. I recommend something that's going to do a lot of DPS but will not hurt you. So anything that you have that does a lot of DPS but has no possibility of hurting or killing you, that's a positive. You, you're going to want to use those. And as far as plates go, typically we read the middle symbol. Then we go clockwise, read the other middle symbol, keep going clockwise, read that other middle symbol, and everybody types in into chat what they have. If you're on console, I will say this, just be sure that somebody is writing it down for the sake of the Petra's run. If you don't have anybody writing it down, you're gonna want somebody to write it down. I know on console you guys don't have a chat, and that is very frustrating, and I wish that you did. So congratulations, you have beaten the vault. There's not really much more for me to say other than make sure you're staying on top of knights, make sure that you are just on top of everything. Congrats though, you are on to the final two parts of this Petra's run. So you beat the vault, you made it to Riven, congratulations, you're here. You're at the ultimate cheese spot now. So this part is very dependent on what weapons you have to go flawless here. You could be at the legit way flawless, but that's just not fun, nor is that. It is fun, but it's not the most optimal strategy, especially if you're looking to get your Petrus run done as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So here's what we do for the Petra's Run Ribbon. We use as much Ribbon's Curse or Transcendent Blessing gear as possible. The new weapon to use is no longer Cluster Bombs. They're still good, but they're not the best to use here anymore. You're going to use Prospector, and you're going to use as much Grenade Launcher Reserves armor as possible with as many Transcendent Blessings or Ribbon's Curse. Those are going to be very helpful here. You're going to put on your Prospector. You need a Titan with either Hammer Strike, or you need somebody on your fire team with a Tractor Cannon and a way to stay healed, shooting Ribbon in the chin, or hitting Ribbon in the chin when the chin rests i cannot stress enough how many times somebody goes up to riven and tries to kick riven with a hammer strike and the chin hadn't rested and boom there goes your run after you go down into the room if you're on pc i don't know if this works on console somebody else in the comments maybe wants to confirm this or not but if you're on pc okay when you're in the crystal room and you go in there and it says the chamber is sealed Make sure to count to three in your head, and when it, if you see a shadow on the wall, the giant black wall, if you see a shadow there, that means you are good to stay. If you do not see a shadow after three seconds, you need to leave. And you need to hug the wall that says joining allies and run to the right behind the trees, jump down there. Most people that are watching this video know this, I'm just making this pretty clear for people who don't know how to run this. After you jump down from the tree area, you fall down, you keep falling down, or the or the crystal, you keep clearing ads, clearing ads, you're going to clear all the ads, wait for Riven to come in, have somebody drop the well in the semi-circle, but not the semi-circle, the mini, the tinier circle, not the big circle, but the tinier circle, you're going to have that titan get the hammer strike, or whoever is getting the tractor cannon, making sure that they stay healed. And then you're going to shoot directly into the blight. Do not hit any eyes. Do not, you don't, with Prospector, you do not need to hit to the left and the right. Make sure you're using that. Boom, 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 boom. And hopefully you did it well and you are getting sent to the Ascendant Realm. Like I said, if you don't have a Prospector, you can still use other things. You can still use a Cluster Bombs Rockets. Um, they're still good, but they're definitely not Prospector good. So if you have it, use it. If you don't, 
I would say try to talk to Xur, try to do Leviathan. Those are going to be ways that you can get your one exotics to drop. Do all of those things because if you don't have that weapon, it's not going to be as easy. It's not going to be impossible, but it's not going to be as easy. So I recommend that weapon. Once you are taken into the Ascendant Realm by Riven, make sure to have two Guardians at least go forward and go very slow. Clear out the adds, preferably you'd want a Warlock to escort the other person just to keep a healing nade, rifts, keeping them alive, kill all the Cabal in there. Everybody else that is not going forward needs to then be swapping to weapons for the next encounter. By, by next encounter weapons, I mean using Thunderlord, using things like hand cannons, using things like shotguns, just making sure that you have your subclass, your loadout, ready to go clear some adds at a fast pace because Queen's Walk is coming up right after this. So the other two guardians, once they are running forward and they grab the orb at the end of the Ascendant Realm and get teleported back, once you then destroy the blight in Riven's mouth for the final time before you jump into the heart, you are going to then be swapping your weapons. While Riven is stunned and about to open up her mouth, you are going to be swapping your weapons to whatever loadout you need to run. I recommend for Warlocks that you stay with the well. I recommend with Titans that you still run uh, Hammer Strike, or if you want to, you can run the Bottom Tree Arc subclass. That is really good. Make sure to not hit your teammates with it, though. We've actually had a death doing that. My bad. Um, after you have made it to the queen's walk you are going to go immediately the reason why you are going immediately is because it refrains you from getting the guitar error which yes is still a thing they said that they smashed it but it is still a thing so make sure that you are getting away from the guitar error by going as fast as possible we've actually had a few runs end because of it but yeah it's just frustrating so make sure, but we found that this is actually the best way, is just go fast. Just go really, really fast and you will avoid guitar error. When you're running full speed, make sure to grab the orb to reset somebody at four seconds. So you're gonna be running forward, out of the mouth. Run, 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 run. Person drops the orb, not at the tongue, I say before. I usually say that little circle before the tongue. Reason why is because if anybody's kind of far away and they're at seven or something when the orb drops They could die if they're not in a good spot and that could end your run So you want to make sure everybody's in there as long as they can at four seconds when the person's in the realm We always have the first guy who gets sent in grab the last orb So if you guys know how this run works basically when you get sent in there's orbs in the ascendant realm Not the ascendant realm the crystal realm. I don't know what it's called anyway you get sent into this realm there are orbs in there the first time there's one then two then three then four and etc etc right so the last person in there or the first person in there first person who ever got sent in there who's grabbing the first orb will always grab the last orb remaining in the room from then on it just makes it easier from an organization point of view it's not required it just makes it easier when they grab that orb they should do it at four seconds for the reset Everybody make sure you're clearing ads. It is your responsibility to stay with the person with the orb. It is not their responsibility to slow down. If you really need it, I'm sure they will. They should. If you really need it, they should slow down. But they, it is not their responsibility to. I, I will stress that again. It is not their responsibility to slow down. It is your responsibility to speed up or to stay with them. They are slower than you. You can catch up. After you have made it through the rooms, through the trenches, through the crystals, through all of the pain and years of life taken off of you, congratulations, you have slammed the orb for the final time, and, and Petra's so run is completed. Well, that was a little scary. Holy shit. I'm glad I never had Petra's run? Again. Petra's run? There it is. Petra's run, run baby! Let's I go! I also just got sunburn. <laughs> oh my yeah, god. Petrus. Oh, I got a, I got a... Now, if there's anything that I missed during this guide, please let me know. I'm sure there's the smallest little details here and there, but that is how I teach the Petra's Run guide to everybody that I ever play with. I recommend, if you come into my Twitch streams, I recommend you watch this video before learning how to do Petra's Run. You have a good 
eye for what to look out for. I recommend watching this video first. And if you are watching this on YouTube and you don't know that I stream, once again, my name is EvanF1997. I'm live on Twitch four days a week right now. I used to do five, but right now I swapped to four just for my, <laughs> my fatigue and my health. Um, but yeah, all that stuff will be in the description. I love you guys. And once again, any questions, let me know. Have a good one. Peace. Thank you for watching.